Hello students, today in your algebra class you're going to be working on variables and order of operations. So at the end of this lesson you should be able to identify variables and solve problems involving order of operations. So before we begin let's go ahead and write down the notes for this transitional table, translational table below. Notice we have English math and the actual symbol itself. Notice that for English more than or the sum of means addition, which obviously the symbol would be the plus sign. Less than or minus is subtraction or the minus sign. Product of or multiplied by is multiplication. Quotient or divided by is division. And one that is commonly overlooked is the word is or equals or is equal to all represents equals or the equal sign. So please make sure you write that down. Now we're going to do a couple of quick practice problems just to demonstrate how we use that table. So for the problems or examples below we have three of them. Example one says four less than x. So in this instance there's one special case. Less than does mean subtraction but the order in which we write these numbers does matter. So when we say four less than x what we're actually having you write down is x minus four. And the reason why we do that is because this is a comparison. It's saying that we have four less than x. So whatever four, whatever x has, we have four less than that. Which is why we are subtracting four from x. Number two, the sum of thirteen and twice the number. Notice that it says the sum. So the sum means an addition problem. So sum of thirteen so sum is plus 13 and twice a number, so two times a number. And since we don't know what that number is, we're going to give it a variable x. The third one says the perimeter of, let's write in a square, perimeter of a square equals four times the length of a side. So if you look at it, perimeter of a square equals four times length of a side. So what this is saying is that we have the perimeter is equal to four times four times the length of a side. So side. So P equals four S. Let's try another example. For this one it says given the table define a variable and write an algebraic expression. So in here we're going to define our variable as x and we're just going to look for a pattern so we can generalize. One tape costs 850. So you'll notice that one, co one tape costs 850. That's our unit rate, our unit price. Two tapes cost $17. And if you think about it, the way they got that was 2 times 850. For three tapes, you guessed it, it's three times 850. Notice how we're writing it on the right, just so you can see just how easy this is. For four tapes, four times 850. Now, for x tapes, wouldn't it be the same exact pattern? It'd be x times 850. And that's it. So in algebra, part of it is we're looking for ways to generalize what we're given. So order of operations, you guys all know this, it's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. But what you're used to seeing is PEMDAS written in the following fashion. And unfortunately, this method does get a little bit confusing, which is why we're not going to use it. Instead, we're going to use the following. Now when we do multiplication or division, it's from left to right. And same thing for the bottom one. Okay, and we're going to use this as a checklist. So, we're going to try number one. 
is 21 plus 49 divided by 7 plus 1. So what's great about PEMDAS is we use it as a checklist. So number one, are there parentheses? No, so we're done. Exponents? No, done. Multiplication or division? Yes, there's a division here. So we're going to do that first. So we have 21 plus 49 divided by 7 is 7 plus 1. Notice we only did the stuff that we underlined, the rest we just brought down. So now, do we have any multiplication or division? No, so check. Addition or subtraction? We have addition, and we have it twice. So we're going to go from left to right. So this is going to become 21 plus 7 is 28 plus 1, and now 28 plus 1 is obviously 29. We'll try that with number 2. Number 2, we're going to start from the beginning, so we're going to erase our checklist. Do we have parentheses? Yes, we do. So we're going to do this one first because it's the innermost. So so we have 3 times 7 plus 4 is 11, minus 2, and then times 6. So we're going back to parentheses again. Do we have any? Yes. So we're going to do that next. We have 3 times 11, so that's 33 minus 2 times 6. And then again, do we have parentheses? Yes, 33 minus 2 is 31 times 6. So that gives us 186. And then we're done. Number 3, same idea. We'll get to our checklist again. And we have parentheses, so we're going to go ahead and do those. We have two sets of parentheses. So we can do both of them at the same time, as long as we're just doing the parentheses. So we have 10 squared, which is 100, minus 4 times 8, divided by 8 plus 9, which is 17. Now we still have parentheses, so we have to work on the parentheses from the inside. So let's look carefully. We have in the parentheses, we have 100 minus 4 times 8. So if you look at our list, multiplication or division come first. Therefore, we should do within the parentheses the 4 times 8. So that's 100 minus 32. divided by 17. Now we still have parentheses, so 100 minus 32 is 68 divided by 17. So 68 divided by 17 is 4, and then we're done. Last but not least is number 4. It says let a equals 5, b equals 12, and c equals 2. So we're going to solve this slowly by substituting first. So 2 times b, which they said is 12, divided by c, which they said is 2, plus 3 times a, and a is 5. So now that we've substituted, we're going to go through our checklist again. Do we have parentheses? Yes, but that's part of multiplication. Do we have exponents? No, so check. Multiplication or division? We have a couple times. We have multiplication here, we have division here, and then we have multiplication here. Notice that's three times. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from left to right. So 2 times 12 is 24, divided by 2, plus 3 times 5. Then we're going to go from left to right again. So 24 divided by 2 is 12, plus 3 times 5. Now remember, multiplication and division goes first. So we're going to do 12 plus 15, because 3 times 5 is 15. And then we're going to add this up, and this turns out to be 27. Now it's your turn. Try solving these, three, these four problems. Once you're done, Write it down on your notes, and we'll check them tomorrow. That's all for this time. Have a good one.